Yep, go ahead and start. Okay, so today we're going to review the pattern and we're going to review techniques on making three different styles of hats, three different, um, three different ways of making hats. We're going to review this one is um, the easiest one. We're going to review it first, but there's still lots to learn. Um, it's called the knitted watch cap. It's knitted flat and then seamed. And then this one is called Megan's hat and it's knitted in the round. And then the final one, we're going to look and see a quick tutorial on how to add something exciting like Fair Isle to a hat. So that's what we're covering today. So I don't know if you have your patterns or not, but this is what the pattern looks like. It's a lion brand pattern and it's using a chunky yarn. Today I'm using Lion Brand Color Made Easy, but a really good recommendation that you could get from michaels.com is um, going to be homespun. So you could use homespun and order that from lionbrand.com. Um, so maybe do we want to switch the camera to the overhead view? So so here's the pattern. It is available for free. And so you can see it. So this hat comes in different sizes. It comes in small, medium, or medium large. And the measurements on it are given for the various sizes. Materials, you need one or two balls of yarn. This one originally called for woolly chunky, which is discontinued. So you do want to double check the yardage if you're using a different chunky yarn and make sure you get the right number of yards. Um, so, and then you need size um, 10.5 knitting needle and a size 10 knitting needle and then large add blunt needles for weaving in your ends. Okay, so gauge is not really important for a hat, um, but if you want to get the exact gauge, you might want to use a larger or a smaller needle depending on how tight or how loose that you knit. And this hat is, um, we're starting at the lower edge with the smaller needles and we're casting on 73 stitches. So um, I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to cast on. I'm not going to cast on 73 stitches, but quickly demonstrate for people to review the cast on. So I'm going to review and demonstrate the knitted on cast. So you start off just like a regular knit stitch, but instead of just transferring that stitch over, you put it on the left-hand needle. And you put it on backwards. I'll demonstrate that again. Start off just like doing a regular knit stitch. But when you do a knit stitch, normally you would transfer that stitch off, but we're putting it back on. And this is the knitted on cast on. It gives a very good edging for most uh, projects, most beginner projects. So if you don't know this one, you might want to give it a try. But if this is the one you use, then you'll be pretty much set. Another really good one is the long tail cast on. I use that one a lot as well. So any questions about the cast on? You feel pretty good about that? So the next instruction for this one is, we're going to work ribbing. So row one, and they're telling you that's going to end up being the wrong side. We're going to purl. And then there's an asterisk. So whenever there's any type of punctuation, um, it usually means you're going to have to pay attention to something. Something is usually going to be repeated. So you want to always double check when you see an asterisk. We're going to knit two, and we're going to purl two. We're going to repeat from the asterisk across. So make sure, so here we're purling one, then there's the asterisk. So we're, we're just repeating what is from the asterisk. So we start here, knit two and purl two. Row number two, it begins with the asterisk right at the beginning. And we're going to knit two and purl two, uh, repeat from the asterisk all the way across to the last stitch ending with a knit one. And we're going to repeat the ribbing rows one and two until it's approximately four and a half inches. So now I'm going to demonstrate um, how to do knitted ribbon. So 
So we're going to start off with two knit stitches. And when you're working ribbing, always remember you want to make a full stop, open your needles, bring your yarn in between your needles. And now that your yarn's in the correct position, you can do as many purl stitches. So you do a purl, two, two purl stitches. Full stop. The yarn back in between the needles. You don't, don't want it to go around the needle or anything silly. Two knit stitches. Bring it back. Two purl stitches. Okay, so does anyone have any questions about working ribbing? Have you guys worked ribbing before? And I'm using this blue yarn, which is perfect for making hats for our anti-bullying campaign, Hat Not Hate, which was founded a couple of years ago by Shira Blumenthal, which is an anti-bullying or bullying prevention. So you can go to hatnothate.org to get all the information about that, make hats, send them in, and then they're distributed to once the schools reopen, they'll be distributed in, um, to the children and they talk about anti-bullying and bullying prevention. So and they have to be blue because blue is the anti-bullying color. So that's one row of ribbing. So if there are no questions about ribbing, I will move forward. Are there any questions at all before I move forward? Did have a question. Does the knitting end on a knit stitch? Sorry, does, does the, the ribbing? ribbing? Yes. Well, ribbing. the answer is yes, yes, no. All right. So, oh, yeah, always. Okay. So, what's the row one? We're going to start with the purl and we knit two and purl two. And then row number two, we're going to start with knit two, purl two, ending with a knit. So, depending on what row you're on, depends on what you're gonna end with. But I wasn't really knitting the pattern, I was just demonstrating um, how to cast on and how to do knits and pearls together in the same row without mess messing up. But just follow the pattern. Um, row number one, you're gonna end with two pearls, and row number two, you're gonna end with one knit stitch. Okay, any questions about anything else? I think if we could see the ribbing for one more row one and more then if you row. could okay. speak up a little bit too i just moved my computer a little closer so. all right is that better so here talk a little is, bit more we'll judge here is the ribbing again so we're going to start off and remember i'm demonstrating ribbing i'm not really working the pattern because i didn't want to cast on 78 stitches and make you sit here and suffer through that Curls, full stop, the yarn has to go in between the needles, like if you're scoring a field goal or something, and then do two knits, full stop. This is the important part, you bring it between the needles, and if you, if you start to enter the stitch and you, you have to stop separate and then bring it. So make sure before you enter the stitch, the yarn is in the right position. Was there a specific question about the ribbing or we just wanted to see it again? Not about ribbing, but we've got a couple questions about right side versus wrong side. And I think that might be what you're gonna to come to next, so. Okay, yeah, well, for ribbing, actually, for knit two, purl two ribbing, there really is no right side or wrong side, technically. 
But for this pattern, they're having you um, build in a little bit of a seam allowance. So that's what's going to create. That's why it's important whether it's right side or wrong side to start with. But if you were making a ribbed scarf or something like that, there's really not a right side or wrong side for knit two purl two ribbing because it, it, it's the same on either side. really. Okay, so that's our ribbing. So, and what it told us in the beginning when we started was we're going to work our ribbing and row one counts as a wrong side. And we're going to repeat the ribbing one and two until it's about four and a half inches, ending with a wrong side row, meaning that means just having completed a wrong side row. And then you're going to change to larger needles. And on the right side, you're going to knit across increasing two stitches evenly spaced. So we're gonna start out with this hat with either 73 or 77 stitches, depending on which size you're making. And then it wants us to increase two stitches evenly spaced. So the way I like to do that would be maybe the first stitch, do an increase, uh, knit about halfway through and do an increase and then finish that row. So I'll show you quickly how to switch to larger needles. So here are my smaller needles and here are my larger ones. So for just this one row, I'm gonna be knitting with one large needle and one small needle. So you'll be knitting with two different size needles and just wants us to knit all the way across. And I'm gonna demonstrate quickly an increase. So this is the increase you could use. You could do knit front and back of the loop. So the way you do that is you enter the front stitch, the front of the stitch, uh, bring up a loop just like normal, and then you go into the back of the same stitch, wrap your yarn, bring that through, and now you have two stitches coming off of one stitch. So I did an increase by one. Um, and it always kind of creates this little bump. So I'll do that. Do it one more time. So you enter the stitch just like normal, wrap the yarn just like normal, bring the loop through, and then you take a second to pause. You swing your right hand needle through the back, go through that back loop, wrap your yarn, bring it through. And remember, you want these evenly spaced out. I did these two right in a row just because I'm, I'm just demonstrating. So you would want to do one in the beginning and then one about halfway through. So I'm just knitting across the first row of finishing the ribbing and I'm knitting my stitches onto my larger needle. And the, re the reason they have you use a smaller needle to start with is because they want the ribbing to be a little more snug, a little tighter so it'll stay on your head better. And then the rest of the hat's on a little bigger needle, so it'll be softer. So it'll have a, a some softer drape if you want a slouchy hat. All right, so I've knitted them all off of my small needle. So you can just get rid of those, move those out of the way. And now I'll be continuing with my two large needles. So any questions about any of that? I feel like there was a lot going on there. You were actually very psychic and answered Tammy's question immediately as she typed it. Um, okay. and she had wondered what the two different numbers in the cast on were for. Okay, yeah. So, anything else about? So, moving forward. So, now it wants us to work stockinette stitch. We're going to continue until the cap measures approximately nine and a half inches or 10 inches beginning from the beginning, ending with a purl row. So stockinette stitch means that you knit one side and you purl one whole side. So that's all that means. So I just finished a knit row. So now I'm going to do a purl row. 
and I'll demonstrate. I can show you a couple different ways to do a pearl. This is the way I do it, which is kind of a way I just made up when I taught myself to knit. And it works for me, and I like it. But it's not real fast. This is the British method when you wrap it with your right hand. I promise I can do it. And then there's the continental pearl, which I am not good at, but I will demonstrate it for you. It doesn't matter how you do your pearl, as long as you're um, entering the stitch this direction, your yarn goes that direction, and then you pull it through, transfer it over. There is an exception though, the Norwegian pearl. You might wanna look that up. I can't demonstrate it because I haven't done it for a long time, but it's a complete different, it adds, it changes the whole world of your purling. If you ever wanna look up the Norwegian pearl, just for some added excitement in your purling life. Okay, so finish this purl row, and then we'll be moving on, unless there are any questions. We had a question about your knitting style, Darren. Mm -hmm. Are you a left-handed knitter or what technique are you using there? I, um, I don't know. Um, I made this up when I first started knitting before I knew anything about knitting. I just, this is just how I, it naturally flowed from my hands. Um, you don't usually throw with your left hand, but that's how I normally do it. So it's kind of a cross between throwing and continental knitting, which is a, I always say that's the way weirdos knit. And I have met other people that knit that way, but is it a, is it a real way, Claire, or is it just a kind of a random way? Is there a name for it? I don't know if there's a name for it, but as long as your stitches are all mounted correctly and coming out the same way, then hey, yep. use whatever so you want to. That's what I do, but I can demonstrate all different ways if you're interested. So that's what it looks like. I have two rows of stockinette stitch, so I'm not going to do any more of that and bore you. We'll move on to something more interesting. I'd just like to cover some of these beginning things just in case people have questions. Okay, so it says what it's telling us um, to work stockinette stitch until your cap measures approximately nine and a half or ten inches from the beginning ending with a purl row, which means just having completed a purl row. And that, will bring us right to here. So, and when it says to measure it from the beginning, what it wants you to do is to measure it starting right here with the edge of the cast on. So right, just right from the very beginning, from where you started working, measure it up, and it says approximately because you might measure it and maybe it's it's nine and a fourth and you knit one row and now it's nine and three fourths. So you never really make it to nine and a half, but it doesn't make any difference. So they don't want you to have anxiety about whether or not you got the exact measurement because it doesn't matter at all. So what it wants us to do next for the crown shaping and that creates the, a, a more narrow at the top so that it comes down to a nice smooth or like a dome finish. Um, so you don't have that bunching up at the top. So row number one of the crown shaping, it starts with the asterisk. So you know you're gonna be repeating something. You wanna knit five, knit two together, repeat from the asterisk across, ending with knit five. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, row number two, and each of the following wrong side rows. So whenever you're purling or working on the wrong side or an even number row, you're just purling. You're not gonna do anything else. There's nothing exciting happening. And then we're gonna move forward for those rows. Now, the way I like to set this up, and especially for beginners, I think it makes, makes it nice so that you can kind of keep track of where you are and you don't forget. Um, it's telling us to knit five and then knit two together. So that, that counts as seven stitches. So I went ahead and put a stitch marker marking out every seven stitches. So that way, when I come 
if you're right before that mid marker, I'm always sure that that's where I'm supposed to do my um, decrease. When I first started making hats, sometimes I'd, you think you're going to lose count, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're on the right count, but you're not sure. And this way, you're always sure. And then once you get more secure with your knitting and you're more confident, maybe you don't want to use the stitch markers, but I like them. I, I always use them. So we're going to knit five. So one, two, three, four. Oops, my count was not right. Oh, wait a minute, I dropped a stitch. So now you're going to get to see me unknit and pick up a stitch. This is how it works in real life. You see, I dropped that guy and it didn't unravel. So all I have to do is pick it up and put it right back on. Now, let's see if my stitch count is right. It is very hard to count to seven after all, right? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And then I need to knit two together. So knitting two together, normally when you knit, you would just go through one stitch. But knitting two together, you skip it, you go to the second stitch go through both, and then just knit like normal. And that's a decrease by one. So instead of seven, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then when you come to the stitch marker, all you do is you slip it over. Um, you wanna be careful you don't knit that into your knitting. Um, just slip it right over, and then you're gonna do it again. So one, two, three, four, five, and then knit two together. So you go through both stitches, set it up just like a regular knit stitch, wrap your yarn, oops, make sure you bring it through both, and then transfer it over. I've decreased by one, Transfer your stitch marker over and continue. Do we have any questions about that? I don't want to, I'm not going to do the whole row and bore you to death watching this if there's no need to do it. I'll just do one more. And then. and then start again. So that's actually pretty easy. It's not, it's not hard at all. And the stitch markers help make sure you stay on the right place. So that way you're always secure of what you're doing. And so let's look at the crown shaping. It wants us to knit five, knit two together. And then on the wrong side row, we're just gonna purl all the way across. On row three, you're gonna knit four and then knit two together. And then it's skipping row, I'm sorry, row, th yeah, row three, and then it's skipping row four. And then row, because it's telling us just to purl, um, row five, knit three together. And then row seven, knit two, and then knit two together. So knit, knit row five is knit three, knit three together. Repeat it all the way across. And then row number nine, you want to knit one and then knit two together 16 times or 17, depending on the hat that you're doing. And then it does give us information on the last even, the last wrong side one. It is telling you to purl that last row because it thinks maybe you'll do number nine, feel like you're done, and then not finish that last purl row. And what it's telling us next is leaving a long tail measured approximately 18 inches, cut the yarn, Thread the tail onto a yarn needle back through the remaining stitches with the first stitch. It sounds very confusing. Um, pull the opening closed and then seam it and blah, blah, blah. So let me show you exactly how that works. Because that sounds like we're doing a lot of stuff, but it's actually, it sounds complicated, but it's actually super easy. So what you'll end up with is something like this. So here's my ribbing from the beginning. And then here's the body of my hat. I've done all my decreases, and you see you can do them in the right, um, if your stitch count remains correct, 
you have these nice um, lines on your hat. It creates a decrease in these lines, so they're very nice. So you cut your yarn, leaving a very long tail. You want to. You don't want to skimp on this because you're going to use that to seam your hat and you don't want to run out. Um, so we're going to thread this through our yarn needle. And what it was telling us to do, it sounded very complicated, but super easy, to take your yarn needle and you're just going to put that through each one of these stitches. So we don't have to bind off, and you don't want to let any fall loose or your hat will unravel. Okay, so make sure you didn't lose any. And then you pull this through. And you cinch it up really tight. And that's going to be the top of your hat. So you want to make sure you cinch it up really tight and sometimes I will give it an extra I'll like join it to this side here and bring it through over here and give it an extra layer to pull it super tight but I don't want to do it because I'm going to end up undoing this one again for my next time I teach this class for demonstrating but that helps to make it really secure um, and it doesn't really tell you to do that that's just something I do for experience so Pull it really tight and then give it a stitch right here to join these sides together. And then a nice seaming technique that we're going to do is called mattress stitch. And it works really well with stockinette stitches. Super, super um, nice to do. So what you want to do is you want to find, find your edge stitch. So sometimes it's hard to find that edge stitch because it wants to curl. So you just want to make sure you're finding, kind of isolate that edge stitch so you can see where you're working from. Um, and we're going to kind of pull it open here. So right there, we're going to find these bars that are in between our knit stitches. Now you wouldn't want to pull it open like this on your real hat because it, it might stretch out your fabric. But for demonstration purposes, I want you to see. So in between your rows of knitted stitches, you find these bars. So, and you take your needle and you pick up the first bar. And then you go to this side. And you pick up your first bar on that side. And once you set it up, you just want to go in a straight line. So then you go here. Pick up that bar. So it's kind of like lacing up shoes. So while I'm doing this, does anyone have any questions on anything we've talked about so far? We need to, we're going to move on to the next hat pretty soon. But we've covered a lot for this one. Angela has a question on the seaming. Are you skipping bars or are you going through each stitch on each side? I go through each stitch on each side because I think it makes a more secure seam, um, especially if you're using big yarn like this, because if you skip it, it's, it's going to leave a big, I think it can, gives it a not such a secure seam. What do you do, Claire? Do you do every bar or not? I try to knit in the round so I don't have to see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so you might be thinking that does not look like a good seam. But once you get a couple of inches going, you just pull your yarn. And as you can see, it pulls that nice and tight. It makes it so that you really can't even see that there is a seam there. I'll do a couple more just so that you know, any questions about this is called mattress stitch and it's a very it's a little tedious the first couple times you do it but after you get the hang of it it is very easy to do and it's very nice if you don't want to do this though 
um, one of the best parts about knitting is there's so many ways to do everything. You could, um, you could do the whip stitch, you could do a running stitch, you could just do pretty much any, any way that you want to close it. So we'll do a couple and then pull it like that. And it closes it right up for you. And then what you end up with is, you end up with a hat like this, it's closed. Oh, wait, no. That's not the right hat. So, so from this one, the inside of the seam, you do get a bit of a bulk, um, bulky seam like that, but from the outside, it really doesn't show at all. And once this is finished, it'll be pretty much an invisible seam. Okay, any questions at all about this hat or this pattern or any of the techniques we covered? I was gonna say you answered that one before I could get to it. Someone wanted to see the inside of the seam. So good job there. Not my first day. <laughs> but yes, we're about halfway through our hour. Or so we'll get moving on the next two hats. So the next hat is this one. This one's called Megan's hat. And I really like this one. I like the other one too, but I've made this one a couple of times for different demonstration. Um, this one is a free pattern on lionbrand.com. Um, if you need to find it, it, you can maybe use this number or you can do Megan's hat. Um, this one also a really good choice of yarn is um, Homespun by Lion Brand and that's available on michaels.com. Uh, you wanna use a chunky yarn is the trick because this one is calling for Color Made Easy which is a chunky or a number five yarn. And perhaps the gauge isn't as crucial, but you do want to make sure you're getting a very similar gauge. So for this one. Darren, sorry, yeah. before we get going, are you accidentally setting patterns on top of your computer microphone? No. Is oh, it? okay. Okay, you got a little muted there. Okay, I'll try to bring it a little closer. That does sound like something I would do. So for this one, um, we need one ball of Color Made Easy, or you can use homespun. Probably one ball would do it. Um, size 10 needles, size 10 double pointed needles, sorry. Um, stitch markers and a large eyed blunt needles. And then also it's having you use circular needles, size 10 that are 16 inches long. So for this, I want you to understand that if you're using circular needles, you have two different measurements that you have to pay attention to from now on. You have to pay attention to how big, how big the needle is. And this is a size 10, and that talks about how big the needle is around. And the length of your um, circular needle, and this is 16 inches from tip to tip. So from tip to tip, it goes all the way around, 16 inches, and for a hat, you want to make sure that you're using a 16 inch circular. You don't want to go any bigger um, because usually the next size up is like 24 inches and that is going to make it too big of a hat and your head will not be that big and your hat will be too big. Um, the reason is, is I can load this up with as many stitches as I want to make it bigger. I could do a huge huge hat or a cowl or maybe even a poncho on this. You could just jam those stitches on. But if the circular needles are really big, you can't really stretch those stitches out around a big circular needle. So you want to make sure you're using the right size. And then for joining in the round, if you've never knitted in the round before, you can see how we join in the round. First thing you want to double check is that all of your stitches are facing the same direction and they're not twisted. So if they are twisted, they're going to look something like this. So you can see right here, if you follow the nice flat row of stitches, then something doesn't look right there. So um, they're not all laying flat. So you want to untwist them so that they're laying flat and they could be twisted two or three times. You know, when you're casting on, it could be turning in your hand. So clearly, you know, that's not 
that's not right. Something looks funny. So you want to make sure you double check that nothing is twisted. And when you're knitting in the round to join your yarn in a circle, you want to make sure that your working yarn is starting off in your right hand. And then the first stitch you join will, the first time you knit a stitch, it will join it. So you knit your stitch. Two. It's going to have us do knit two purl two ribbing. Very popular choice for a hat. And once you knit a couple of stitches, you want to stop. And you want to check to see if it's joined. So it is joined because I've got, I've got that yarn joining from one side to the other. And one thing I forgot to do, I usually don't do this, but it's recommended for beginners, is you put a stitch marker on the beginning, and that marks the beginning of your round. So when you go all the way around and you get to that stitch marker, you know you've completed one round. If you forget to put that on, and what I usually do is I usually just see where the tail lines up, and I know that's where my beginning is. So it, you could do either way, but you want to make sure that it's joined. Now there's there's one, you have to still have to be careful and watch what you're doing because it's just joined by this one string and what can happen is it can still get twisted in your hand. Like it can still get twisted in your hand like that. So I'm not gonna knit all the way around because I don't want you to have to watch that. Um, but once you go all the way around, you wanna stop one more time so I pretend that I've knitted this entire row, I've done my ribbing, and you lay everything out again, making sure that your stitches are not twisted. It'll be much easier to see this time because you've got, you'll have this much um, fabric started. And then just make sure that nothing is twisted. And for the second round, once you knit that second stitch, you're either twisted or not twisted. You're locked in place. So if you did it right, then you don't have to worry ever again because it's it's right. If you did it wrong, however, you're wrong. So you have to end up ripping it out. So just take that one extra minute, double check, then knit your second stitch and move forward. Okay, any questions about that? Is that a lot or? We had a couple of general questions here. Let's see. Um, can you use a smaller size circular needle? I add that was clarified with a smaller length. Yeah, you so can. Like okay, sorry. Um, you can. They don't make them uh, much smaller. Like they make nine inch ones and 12 inch ones. And I've seen eight inch ones. And you certainly can. Uh, the problem with, I like the smaller ones. I use them for baby hats. But when you make a smaller needle, a smaller circumference, what happens is the tip of the needle has to be much smaller so that it can make that circle. So some people really don't like the tiny little tip. Um, what will happen is you'll just end up jamming more stitches on a smaller one, and that's fine too. But if you put too many stitches on, then they kind of get spring-loaded and they might pop off the end. Because if, if it's too crowded, sometimes it'll push it off the end. So you can certainly try and see what you like best. There's lots, lots and lots of different ways to do it. Anything else? We had a couple questions on cast on. Um, someone asked, how would you cast on a, onto a circular needle? And someone said also, their cast on stitches get very tight as well. So if I'm gonna unknit this so I can show you. You cast on a circular needle the same way you would cast on any other needle, but I'll demonstrate that because it's easy to say something and then you wanna make sure people understand. But if your stitches are too tight, and that's, that's a really common problem with, um, with people's cast on, sometimes it does get very tight. You can either cast on a one size needle larger. So if it's calling for a size 10 needle, you could cast on a 10 and a half, or, and then switch back to your 10, or you can um, just be very, very careful and try to cast on loose. And if you're not casting on many stitches, it's easy, but if you're casting on a lot of stitches, then you're going to start casting off on loose and then end up casting on tight and have an uneven cast on. Do you have any, any advice for that, Claire? 
I think sometimes you can try casting on to a larger needle and that will make the stitch bigger around. Yeah. I, or I you can good. try putting more space between the stitches as you cast them on and that will give them sort of room to wiggle around and expand. Good idea. Yeah, instead of putting them all together, like leave a little spacing in between them. That's a good idea. Yes, give them some breathing room. So for casting on, so here's my, just the same as you cast on any other. Oh, and here's the problem with casting on and making your stitches very tight. I'll show you this mistake. So sometimes people will do this and they'll shape the stitches around the tip of their needle. And then by the time they get pushed up to the fattest part of the needle, there's not enough slack. And so you can kind of see that one is very tight. And you, so you want to avoid that by when you cast on, after you cast it on, you want to push your stitches to the fattest part of the needle and let them shape up there and resist the urge of pulling that. So you just kind of want them to shape around the needle without pulling it tight. So knit, like just like normal, we're doing our cast on, putting it on over here, and then just kind of let it shape around that fattest part of the needle. Don't, don't let it shape down here where it's tapered and then try to push it up. I've seen students do that and that, make, that can make it extremely tight. So that's a, that's a cautionary tale right there. So any other questions about that? This is a 16 inch circular. Yes, 16 inch circular for hats. Yes, I think we are good. And I also think we need to keep moving on because we got a lot more to cover. Okay, so what we do then is once we've done our cast on and we've joined, so the good news is once you have practiced that first cat, then you're well on your way um, for everything you need to know. So this one, for the ribbed edge, you're going to knit two, purl two, and repeat from the asterisk all the way around. So that's easy, right? We've done that. We know how to do that. Super easy. We're going to repeat round one until the piece measures about four and a half inches from the beginning. So you just measure it as long as you can make it longer, you can make it a little shorter. I think I got off track and made mine a little bit longer, but I like a nice deep ribbing, so that's fine. Four and a half from the beginning. And then the next round, this one wants you to decrease this hat. So you're gonna knit two together, knit 32 stitches, knit two together and knit to the end of the round and you'll end up with 66 stitches. So sometimes they'll have you increase after the ribbing, sometimes they'll have you decrease. It's just whatever the designer chose to do that day. But we already know how to knit two together, so that's really, really easy to do, right? And then it wants you to continue in stockinette stitch, worked in rounds, and so when you do stockinette stitch in the round, you end up knitting every stitch. And you're gonna continue working until the piece measures about eight inches total from the beginning. So you'll measure it from the very beginning until it's eight inches, and that's where you're gonna begin your next step, okay? Any questions about that? We covered a lot of that in other hats. So this one, the last one we did a lot of decreases where we used so many stitch markers and we did it every five stitches. But this one is a little bit different and it gives us the setup round. So after we've done knitted our stockinette stitch to the right length, it wants us to knit 22 stitches, place a stitch marker, repeat from the asterisk once more, and then knit to the end of the round. So what you'll end up with are, this is the blue one, so this marks my beginning, and then knit 22 stitches, place a marker, knit 22 stitches, place a marker, knit 22 stitches back to the beginning. Um, it's nice to use a different color for the beginning so that you know when you've reached that round, the ending of that round. Otherwise, you might get confused. So the, for the decreasing on this one, it's a little bit different. It starts with SSK 
and then we're going to knit to three stitches before the next marker knit two together knit one slip marker and then repeat from the asterisk once more and ssk knit to three stitches before the last marker okay that all sounds very confusing secretly it's very easy let me demonstrate that for you okay so i haven't quite finished my round so i'm going to finish my setup round Okay, so now I'm back to the beginning of my round. Slip that stitch marker right over. And then so it's having me do an SSK at the beginning. Um, SSK stands for slip, slip, knit. And it's a nice way to do a decrease. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. You slip your stitch as if to knit. So you're not knitting it, you're not adding any yarn to it, you're slipping it. So you enter the stitch as if you were going to knit it, so slip as if to knit, and then you just transfer it over, super easy. And now we've done our slip and our slip, so now we have to knit. So we're gonna do, you take your left hand needle and it enters those two stitches like that. So what we're doing is you take your left hand needle and it enters kind of the front like this. And now once you get here, this looks just like a knit two together. So you just wrap your right hand needle and pull it through and then transfer it over. So now I've decreased my stitch. And you can see that stitch leans kind of that direction. And then what it wants me to do according to the pattern is to knit until three stitches before the next stitch marker. So what I am going to do um, is I'm going to ignore the pattern for a minute. And I'm just going to demonstrate slip, slip, knit a couple of more times just for demonstration purposes. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do this on your hat. So just so you can see, slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, enter the stitches with your left hand needle in the front, set it up like that, that looks just like knit two together, wrap your yarn, bring it through both. Now usually when you slip a stitch in other patterns, you slip it as if to purl. Almost always you slip as if to purl. So that's why I'm telling you very, very clearly, slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then knit those two together. So if you're following other patterns and they tell you to slip a stitch and you think, oh, I know how to slip a stitch, I did SSK, it is different. So this is something you need to make sure you understand, okay? Slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, enter that, those stitches through the front with your left hand needle, make the X, wrap your yarn, bring it through both. Any questions about the SSK? Once again, you anticipated people's questions and demonstrated multiple times, so you're on top of things today. Right. Just like I've been teaching for 10 years. Let's get to the next little bit. Okay, so it's, we want to knit until our three stitches before the next marker. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I'm three stitches before the next marker. Knit two together. Let me show you that. We did that in the last one, but I just double checked. So knit, you enter both stitches at the same time. Now, if you look at that, that looks like how the SSK ends up. So it's super easy. So knit two together, you wrap your yarn, bring it through both. We've done a decrease by one, and then we knit one, slip the marker, and then SSK. So we're gonna slip, 
né? Flip knit. I have a hard time knitting when I'm watching my hands through the camera and not actually looking at my real hands. But I think I'm getting a little better at it. And then you just continue knitting until you get to the next marker. And then you would do knit two together, knit one, SSK, and then knit to the next marker, which is your beginning. And ending of that round is knit three before, knit two, you have three stitches left, knit those two together, knit one, and we did our SSK at the beginning. So that'll finish that double decrease. So every time we have a stitch marker, when we're doing this round, we end up decreasing two. So you're decreasing six, six times. You're losing six stitches all the way around. Okay. Any questions about any of that? Okay, so we talked about this. And then, so you do round one, and then round two, you get to just knit. You don't have to do anything strenuous or focus on anything. You just get to knit and enjoy your life. And then you're going to repeat rounds one and two for five more times. And then you're going to repeat round one until you have six stitches remaining between the markers. And then the last round, you knit two together, repeat from the asterisk around, and you'll have nine stitches. So the last round, you're not doing SSK. You're just doing knit two together all the way around. You're going to cut your yarn, leaving a long tail. Thread the yarn tail through the blunt, through onto a blunt needle, and then you're going to draw that through the remaining stitches and pull the top of the hat to close it. So it's the same method how we demonstrated on the other hat, where you just, um, you know, you take the large-eyed blunt needle and draw it through the remaining stitches, cinch it up tight. And then you don't have to do a seam this time, but you do have to secure, you do have to secure that um, last little bit. Any questions about any of that? And then you have to weave in your tail at the end. So how do we feel about all of those things? I think we're pretty good. Um, we did have one quick question about how you keep track of decreases, um, counting them when you don't have a stitch marker. So if you have a fast answer to that, I'm gonna pop our next hat pattern in the chat. And just as a reminder, if people have to leave on time and we go a little bit over, this class is being recorded and you'll be able to see it tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes. So the good news is, there's not a lot left, actually. Um, we've covered most of the techniques that you're going to need for this hat. So this one is the Chance of Flurries hat, also available on linebrand.com for free. Um, this one is using a discontinued yarn, which is Alpine. So what I know about Alpine is it is a number five or chunky yarn. You can always, if you have a pattern with a discontinued yarn, you can always um, search for it online and just Google that original yarn and find out what the specs were of it. And so you can match it up with a, a yarn that's in current production. Um, this one you're using a size 9 needle and a size 10 needle and line brand stitch markers and large eyed blunt needles. And this one has a pom pom, so you need a pom pom maker if you are living the pom pom life. Okay. So let's look at the direction. So with smaller needles and color A. So this one is using two different colors and that's what creates um, the design. And you can have any colors you want and you label them color A or color B and just make sure you keep track of that. You're gonna cast on 72 stitches and divide your stitches on to three needles and join. So this one is telling you to use double pointed needles for the whole thing. But what I am telling you is I would probably not do that. I would probably start off on 16 inch circular needles 
with the smaller ones and then move on and only use double pointed at the very, very end. So at the very, very end of the hat, once you start your crown shaping and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and you can't really stretch those stitches around your double or your 16 inch circular, then you can use, um, transfer that to double pointed needles. And you would transfer that to double pointed needles the same way we transferred it to from smaller needles to larger needles on the other hat. You would just knit, um, knit them directly onto your double points. Now this isn't the hat, but this is just a little demonstration to show you how it should look. You'll space those stitches evenly out on three uh, double pointed needles. It creates this triangle shape kind of, um, and then you will be working through those to close the top of the hat. But I would recommend, strongly recommend, that you cast it on the same way we did for the previous hat where you're using a 16 inch circular. But if you want to try that, you can try either way. So we're going to cast on 72 stitches and then you join to begin in the round, placing your marker you work knit two purl two rib until the piece measures five inches long. So we know how to do that. Everything's good. We're going to knit 34 stitches, knit two together, and then repeat once, ending with 70 stitches. So this one also is having you decrease right after that. And then it wants you to change to larger needles and work in the color dot pattern until the piece measures nine inches. So what you, you could either use double pointed needles as they're recommending, or if you wanna use uh, circular needles, which I'm recommending, you would need circular needle size um, nine, 16 inches, circular needle size 10, 16 inches, and then double pointed needle size 10. So you can try it either way. It's always good to learn a new technique of using the casting on with the double pointed needles. So it wants us to continue in the dot pattern throughout the crown shaping as well. So the dot pattern. Giving us the stitch explanation for the dot pattern here. You're gonna knit one with color A, knit one with color B, repeat from the asterisk all the way around. The next row with color A knit, so just one color, the next round, you're gonna knit with color B, knit one, knit with color A, and then you're just gonna repeat round two, and you're gonna continue on with the dot pattern. You're gonna repeat rounds one through four for the dot pattern. And what that ends up giving you is, you can see how these dots don't really line up. They kind of space out. So you've got this dot, and then you've got this next row of dots, and then this one, and it kind of spaces them out so they don't stretch out in straight lines. So let me show you quickly how to do the dot pattern. And I won't be knitting all the rounds of it because you guys have things to do. You don't want to watch me knit. But it said knit with color A and then knit one with B. So and this is how I like to hold my yarn when I'm doing a fair aisle. I hold it like this. So knit one with color A. Knit one with color A. And then knit one with color B. Knit one with color A. Knit one with color B. Now this is a really, really great gentle introduction to Fair Isle. And with hats, it's a great opportunity to practice new techniques because it's a small project and it's pretty quick. So what you wanna make sure of is that the yarn in the back, which is called a float, you don't want them to be tight. You don't want them to be too loose. You just wanna kind of let them gently float across the back. Uh, another thing is you, if you're holding your yarn like this, you always want to make sure that the colors stay either on the bottom or the top, however they are. Um, it can actually change the way they look if they change. Let's see, oops, right there, I did it wrong. I was talking, I wasn't paying attention. Go back and we'll fix that. 
So if you change your yarn and put this one on top for a while, um, it won't, you won't be able to see the difference immediately, but after the hat's finished, if you'll be able to see that it changed and one color will be more dominant than the other and they can kind of change throughout if you're, if you're not careful. So you want to always try to maintain, however you set them up, maintain them like that. And if you want to do it with your right hand, same thing. You want to make sure you're holding them always the same. So they won't change the way it's looking. I'm really awkward with this because I don't usually wrap with my right hand. And then you can also, favorite technique is have one in each hand. Any questions about this gentle introduction to Fair Isle? We did. Talvin wanted to know how you attached your contrast color at the very beginning. I didn't. And then, I didn't well, attach it. I just picked it up and started knitting with it, right? And then after you've finished your hat, you'll weave this end in. So there's nothing fancy. You just pick up your new yarn and you hold it where you would hold it if it were attached. And oh, you just start Darren, knitting. Move your, or move your hands up a little bit, please. Oh, You're right. off screen. Thank you. So, hold on, I'll show you. Let's end it here. So pretend I'm at the beginning again. Okay, here's my new yarn. Um, make sure you're leaving a long enough tail for finishing. Set them up in your hand the way you want them to be, whichever hand. I'm not attaching it, I'm not doing anything. There's, there's nothing to do. And then you just start knitting. Do you do anything fancy there, Claire? I don't do anything fancy. I'm not a fancy person. Nope. nope. Just start knitting with your new color. And that first stitch is probably going to be a little bit loose, but you're going to weave it in later. So don't worry yep. about it. Um, if it does seem very loose, you can kind of tighten it up a little bit every so often if you feel like you need to. Okay. Yeah. And then with and, this. And I was going to say, we did a whole class on Fair Isle, and that should also still be available at michaels.com slash classes. You can watch a whole hour all about Fair Isle. And then I'm not going to go through the pattern for the rest of it because I do want to demonstrate the pom-pom, but the top of that hat, you just, it's pretty much just decreasing like we did before. So that's the best part about um, learning hats. The techniques you use for one will carry right on to the other one as well. And so what did want to show you the pom-pom maker. Super easy. This is by Clover. Um, I finished one side for us. So you open it up like this and you wrap your yarn on one side and then you close it up. And I'm going to show you how to wrap it on the other side. So you hold it like this. You just kind of hold the yarn in place and you just wrap it. Nothing there's nothing really fancy here either. Most of the stuff's pretty basic, actually. You do want to, however, I will advise you to make sure you're wrapping it clear into the corners. You don't want to skimp on that corner. And then just wrap it. And you could wrap it with different colors. You could do all kinds of fun things. The pom pom. And I like to load mine very, very tight because I like a nice big fluffy pom-pom. But for the sake of demonstration purposes, I'm gonna end it here. But as you can see on this side, I wrap mine extremely tight. And then you close it up and then you take a nice sharp scissor and then you cut right down, you use that as a guide. You kind of enter right through here and use, you can use that as a guide. And if you've got a lot of yarn on there, it's a lot to cut through. So you want to make sure. Aaron, scoot it forward. Thank you. Right. If 
I've got a lot of yarn. So you can cut it in different layers. Like you can kind of, because these shirts are sharp, but if it's super thick, it's going to be hard to cut. And just make sure you got that last little bit. And then just take a yarn. I like to use the same yarn that I made the pom pom with. And you put that just right where you cut. So you put it right between the two pieces. Kind of pull it through. And then make sure you tie this very tight. If you don't tie it very tight, your pom pom could fall apart. So I pull mine very tight. You don't want to break your yarn, but you do want it to be very, very tight. Okay. And then you open it up. It looks like that when it's open. And then this pops apart side to side. So you just pull it apart. And then it just pops back together. And you're ready for your next pom pom. Just kind of shake it out and see how it looks. And you can see it's really lopsided because I didn't do it evenly. And then you just go over and just trim it up until it looks nice and round. There's even techniques I've seen where people carve into these, like they carve into them. You can wrap it with different colors a certain way and carve into it and make it look like a, a bear or an animal or something. I've never done that, but all kinds of videos online. There's so many things to learn and do. And then that's your pom pom. I would go over this more and make it a little more round, like this one. And I like to, I leave this long tail on mine. And instead of tying it permanently on at the top, I put this on my large eye blunt needle. And bring it through. And then do the same with the other side. Bring it through. Turn the hat inside out. And instead of tying this in a nice tight knot and cutting it, I like to tie it in a very secure bow. And then that way, maybe it's not a pom-pom day. You can take that off if you don't want to wear it with the pom-pom. Or if you want to wash the hat, you might not want to run the pom-pom through the washer or however you're washing it. It's easy. So you've got that. And then it's not a pom-pom. You're not in the mood. It's not a pom-pom day. It's easy to take off. So that's my handy little tip about pom-pom. Any questions about anything we covered today at all? Any other questions? I think everyone's very excited about the idea of changing out their pom poms on the hats. You I know, right? You could make a wardrobe. You could. You could make a, a dark one, a light one. You could make a dark and light, half and half. It could be all kinds of things, right? Yes. Um, one quick question: Which size pom pom maker did you just use? That one was the um, the large one. You get a, I think it, you get two of them. It's like large and medium. That one was the large one. All right. And then there's a jumbo one, which makes humongous. That one's really fun. It's like that big around. It makes ginormous pom poms. Yes, that is massive. And I'm gonna put this pattern into the chat one more time for everybody. And just another reminder that this class was being recorded, so it'll be available tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes. All of our previous classes are available either on the Michaels website, or if you can't find them there, make sure to check their YouTube page. And if you have any other questions, you can contact me on Instagram. Um, Claire will put it in the chat for you. It's Mr. Wooly Bear, M-I-S-T-E-R, Wooly Bear. And I'm also on TikTok, apparently, all of a sudden. I usually try to answer questions pretty quick. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if you're interested, we are doing a crochet hat class, pretty much the same thing, but just for crochet. That is coming up next Monday, same time, same place. So make sure and register at Michael's if you're interested in that. Thanks for being with us, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Just practice as much as you can.